Okay, good morning students. I am your lecturer for today. I am private first class Mark Vincent Bucket and I will be teaching you today military Philippine military history. So, uh, what is Philippine military history? So, um, Philippine military history is the study of the role that armed forces played in past events or the uh, role of the Philippine military in its escapades from the past to the present and actually present only from the start from Lapu-Lapu to the colonial era to World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, uh, Iraq War and until recently so let's get started So the scope of our sequences is the Filipinos as ancestral warriors, importance of military history, pre-colonial Spanish and American era, Spanish colonial rule, Filipinos in Spanish military service, Filipino revolutionary government, National Defense Act, World War II, the Republic, post-World War II era, martial law, martial law era, Fifth Republic, and that's it. Filipino as ancestral warriors. Filipinos have never been known as a militaristic people yet they are known as warlike people non conformist individuals who are likely to resist regiments openly called as boar and bear but such attitudes erodes discipline which is vital prerequisite for the evolution of brotherhood filipinos at past were tribe like people they don't have you say an organized military a different tribe has own military traditions and another tribe has different military traditions. That's because our our country is an archipelago. So we cannot say combine our military traditions into one cohesive unit. So that's why there's so many conflicts like uh, the tribes of Panay against the tribes of Cebu. They cannot coexist because they have different military traditions and different beliefs. So yeah, conflict arouses often much, not even every time. The importance of military history. It shows an accurate, objective, description, interpretive record of the activities of the armed forces in peace and war. It gives an interesting and deep sight into the minds and hearts of the military men who in tactical and strategical methods, procedures, and principles, and into the relations between war, politics, economy, philosophy, geography, and the mentality of nations and race, to strengthen the foundations of our knowledge of military strategy and strength. Not all military history involves war. Sometimes it involves politics. War is just the aftermath of uh, military of uh, the dispute because it cannot be solved diplomatic, diplomatically. But it's most possible military history involves in politics first, then in combat. So, pre-colonial and Spanish and American era. Battle of Macnan, April 27, 1521. Mark the first organized resistance of the Filipinos against foreign invaders. Lapu-Lapu, the chieftain of Nactan, defeated Spanish colonizer Magellan. So um, keep in mind, it doesn't say in history that Lapu-Lapu killed Chief uh, Magellan. But we assume that Lapu-Lapu is the one who killed Magellan. But it doesn't say in truth that Lapu-Lapu is the one who killed Magellan. Some say it's just a tribesman. Some say a spear. Some say it's Lapu-Lapu. So we have no concrete proof that Lapu-Lapu is the one in the one who killed Magellan but contemporary historians said that Lapu-Lapu so we will proceed with that knowledge Spanish colonial rule more than 300 years from 1565 to 1898 this made the Philippine restrive and revolts open up they soon clamored for reforms and an end to oppressive friar to rule uh, the Spanish colonial era was how you see we were occupied forcefully by the spanish either we convert to their religion or they wipe us out it's either that divide and conquer that's the motto of the spanish conquistadors at the time they did that in the Mexi mexican Ar archipelago and they do it at the philippine archipelago there's 
their goal in their adventures are to find gold resources to bring back to Mother Spain. So they can spoil the riches in their country flourish. In short, we're just their stepping stone to greatness. So, the different uprising against the Spain. Lacandola, 1574, Tondona Votas. Failure of government La, La, Vera, La Verazes to fulfill Gaspes and promise Lagundala. Lagund is the leader is the Lagundara and the result is failed. Pampanga, 1585 place Pampanga abuse of Spanish and economideros so economideros are Spanish landowners they call themselves Spanish landowners because they didn't buy the land they conquered the land the, the Filipino tribesmen before were how you say not uh, educated how you say not educated like the Spanish so they see that this is their land and some of the tribe Filipino tribesmen just okay and they just take it. The result of the Pampangan uh, uprising was failed because a woman betrayed the revolt. Here's an interesting fact. Uh, the woman was not, uh, how you say, tortured and uh, to betray the revolt. The woman married a Spanish soldier. And the Spanish soldier, the woman, told his husband about the revolt. After that, the soldier told this general, and the general dis defeated the uprising. In order so the uprising will not continue, they stick them into stakes. They stick them into stakes like Vladimir the Impaler. If all of you are familiar with that reference, then good for you. Tondo, 1587-1588. Tondo Coyo Calamiles, desires for independence. Magat Salamat Martin, Juan Banal, Pedro Balingit. Cagayan Ilocos, 1589. Cagayan Ilocos Norte, refusal to pay tribute, tyranny of tribute collectors. This is the style of the Spanish era against the Filipino tribesmen. If you want, if you do not want to, uh, how you say, be conquered by the Spanish, they pay tribute. Either from gold, silver, uh, rubies, spices, anything the Spanish want to gain wealth. If they don't pay, tri if you don't pay the tribute, you get conquered. It's that easy. And because of that, Cagayan and the Locos Norte uprising were easily repressed. Magalat, 1596, Cagayan, abusive tribute collectors, Magalat, failed hired assassins to kill Magalat. Igrot, 1601, Northern Luzon, decide, to religious, decide for religious toleration, and they failed. Irayas, 1621, Cagayan Valley, oppression of the Indios by the Spanish officials, Felipe Catubay, Gabriel Dagay, it did not materialize due to Father Pedro Santo Tomas preaching. Tablot, 1621-1622, Bohol, desired to abandon Christianity and return to the old religious faith. Babaylan, Tamblot, it was oppressed by the Spanish and Cebuanos. This is a typical Spaniard oppression of different religions. The thing about the Spanish conquistadors is they have what they call the Inquisition. When the Inquisition was born, any religion except Christianity were persecuted. Jewish were persecuted, Muslims were persecuted, any animalistic religion were persecuted. That is the role of the Inquisition. They burn people. They burn people because they're not Christians. Next is the Bancao, 1631, Leyte. Decide for religious toleration, Bancao Pagali, they failed. Cagayan, 1625, 1627, 1639. Cagayan, decide for independence in Spanish of the woman who displeases certain Spanish officers. Miguel Lam Aldaban, failed. Leaders were pardoned and later killed when they revolt anew. Caraga, 1629, 1631. Caraga, Northern Mindanao. Dissatisfaction of townspeople to Spanish rule. Result, they failed. 
Cagayan, 1639, Cagayan, dissatisfaction with Spanish rule. It was suppressed. Ladia, 1643, Malolos, Bulacan, and Southern Luzon, awareness from Spanish oppression. Pedro Ladaya, they failed. Visayan, 1649-1650, Eastern Visayas, Northern Mindanao, Zamboanga, caused by gov Governor Fajardo order to send Visayan laborers Tayo Cavite for shipbuilding. Juan Ponce Sumuroy and Pedro Taamug. 1663, Oton, Panay, desired to put up a modification from Christianity. Tapar, it was suppressed. Now, here's an interesting fact about Panay. The instigator was Tapar. He was, uh, in our times, a uh, babaylan. In their times, actually. In their times, a babaylan. They say, in historical facts, they say Tapar was conspiring with the devil. He said he was talking to the devil. But, and they impaled him. Well, actually, they went to a skirmish with him and Tapar was killed. They impaled him as an example to never uh, go against the Christian faith. Actually, the, the devil they're talking about is, animalist, is an animalistic religion. Anything outside of Christianity from a Spanish perspective is the devil. Anything, even we praise our old gods like... Um, I forgot... Uh, uh, okay, okay I, will, I think I forgot. Anything from old gods, not of Christianity, are the devils. This is the mindset of the Spanish. Agrarian, 1745-1746, Bulacan, Morong, Bizal, Cavite, Laguna. Usurp Filipino lands by religious order. Matienza, Matienza default, failed. Silang, 1762-1763, Ilocos, desired to expel the Spanish from Spaniards from Ilocos. Diego Silang, if you remember, if you're familiar with that name, and Gabriel Silang failed. Diego was assassinated. Palaris, 1762-1765, Pangasinan, demand for reforms, especially the changing of local officials. Juan Dia Cruz Palaris failed. Palaris was excused. Basi, 1807, Ilocos, Government Monopoly of Basi Manufacturing, Perdo Mateo. Herman Pulo, Pule, 1840-1841, Quezon Province. Because being a native, Pule was denied to be admitted as a monk. He founded the religious brotherhood Confradracia de San Jose, in which the government outlawed and ordered to be dissolved. Our leader is Pulario de la Cruz and failed. So, if you observe from 15th century to the mid 18th century, all of the revolts from different tribes, different places in the Philippines failed. Because the Filipinos at that time still had that tribe mentality mindset. In their tribe only, they will not accept uh, other help from different tribes. So that's the why the Spanish take the they take this opportunity to cow to cow the Filipinos to easily control them because the, we, the Filipinos has that kind of mentality. They, we are easily subjugated because we cannot band together easily because one, we are island, we are different islands, and two. We have that tribal mindset. Okay, let us continue. Revolts are, character, are characterized into three. Personal and religious, resistant to Spanish, imposed economic and religious institution, land problems, lukewarm spirits of the nationalism among Filipinos, absence of national leader, inadequate training and preparation for warfare. Yeah, these are the inadequacies of the different Filipino when it comes to revolution. Now, let's continue. Filipinos in Spanish military service. The early rule of the Spaniards in our made, in our made them realize that they need the help of the mature Filipinos if they want to keep themselves in power. 
Recruitment of natives proved to be a great value to them as they conquered the entire archipelago with the implementation of We Conquer, Divide, and Rule. Filipinos were also engaged in foreign aggressions. Filipinos distinguished themselves to be their courageous loyalty and leadership talents. At the outbreak of the Filipino Revolution, the Spain had 1,500 Spanish troops. Interesting stories about the Filipino Spanish military service. 1. It happened in 1582. Uh, this is not the common knowledge in Philippine history. This is just, um, if you search it, I think it's common in the internet, but if they t t teach this in school, I think not. In 1582, it's called the Cagayan Battle. This is a battle with Filipinos and Spanish troops, and their enemies were Japanese pirates. The Spanish and Filipinos were fighting the Japanese in the Cagayan Gulf. Uh, about a thousand pirates against, uh, I think, uh, 40, 40 Spanish and uh, uncounted numbers of Filipino sailors. They drive them out. The Spanish and the Filipinos drive out the Span uh, Japanese pirates. The reason that Japanese are in the Cagayan Gulf because Japan and Philippines before were trading silver, uh, gold to silver for their economy. And the Japanese pirates have seen this lucrative trade and they tried to control the, control the Cagayan Gulf. The Spanish weren't having that. So they sent the Filipino and uh, contingent of Spanish soldiers to suppress the Japanese pirates. And they succeeded. Another interesting fact is the Spanish expedition to Borneo, or some call it the Castilian War. The Castilian War was a battle in Borneo when the Spanish want to expand their control to Brunei. But the Sultan of Brunei does not want any Spanish control. They attack. They attack the Philippines. They almost conquered Manila. In fact, they almost conquered Manila in this battle but the Spanish and the Filipinos prevailed and they pushed the Sultan back to Brunei after the battle they sought out peace because uh, trade and look war is not good for business so they want to push they want to push for peace so they can still continue with their trade an interesting fact from these two battles the Fili majority of the soldiers were Filipinos. The, uh, the Battle of the Castilian War, almost 2,000 are Filipino soldiers. Only 300 are Spanish. From these battles, the majority of the battles are Filipino soldiers. The Spanish are more like uh, guides. The true warriors here are the Filipinos. Okay, let's continue. KKK. The KKK means Kataas-taasang, Kagalang-galangang, Katipunan na mga anak ng bayan. Andres Bonifacio founded the Katipunan on 07 July 1892. The two chapters of the revolution were Magdalo and Mangdiwang. Magdalo was led by Bulmero Aguinaldo. Some say the Magdalo was led by Emilio, but that's not true. It was led by his cousin, Bulmero Aguinaldo. Emilio Aguinaldo, before, after that, that time, was just the flag officer, the lowest position from the chapter. Magdiwang, on the other hand, has no faction leader. Magdiwang was ruled by a council. Even though Andres Bonifacio is the head of the KKK, he cannot move his forces without the approval of the Magdalo and Magdiwang group. To prepare the freedom-loving Filipinos for an armed... The KKK's job is to prepare the freedom-loving Filipinos for an armed revolt. The Katipunan formed the nucleus of the revolutionary Philippine army. KKK was have different chapters from Manila all the way down to Visayas. Mindanao has uh, uh, KKK has sl uh, slow grip as, as I say uh, 
not so strong grip in Mindanao. They want to, but they have the strongest grip in Visayas and Manila. Another interesting fact is, even though Manila, Cavite actually, Cavite is pushing for evolution in the Philippines, Panay, on the other hand, was flourishing in the Spanish rule. Panay, on the other hand, was considered the most center of trade in the Philippines. Other than Manila, of course, the number one is center of trade is Manila, but Panay was the second. Panay grew rich of the Spanish because of the Spanish. Panay grew rich because of the Spanish trade. And Panay, the love, Panay, the Ilongos loved the Spanish. Even the start, even from the start of the revolution, after the death of Jose Rizal, from the start of the revolution, Panay didn't revolt from the Spanish. Even that, they even sent troops to Manila to fight for the Spanish. That's why the Sp they don't, uh, Panay has, the Ilongos do not resent the Spanish. They love the Spanish because they are the ones who made Panay rich. Okay, let's continue. The Philippine Revolutionary Government. A year after the outbreak of hostilities between the Katipuneros and the Spanish troops, the PRG or Philippine Revolutionary Government and its armies were born on March 22, 1897 at Tejeros in Cavite. General Artemio Ricarte was named Captain General of the Revolutionary Philippine Army. Marks the founding day of the modern day Philippine Army. General Emilio Aguinaldo declared Philippine independence from Spain on June 12, 1898. He is the first president of the first Philippine Republic. Filipino troops were to enjoy only a brief respite from the combat. The Treaty of Paris was a treaty concluding the Spanish-American War. It was signed by representatives of Spain and the United States in Paris, France on December 10. 1898. The armistice negotiations go back in Washington, D.C. ended with the signing of a protocol on August 12, 1898. Uh, because the Sp Spain lost the war against the Americans, they have to pay reparation reparations. Spain gave Cuba, Cuba uh, the Mariana Isles to the United States and they gave a uh, full authority in Manila to trade in the Philippines. But the Americans were not content. Were not content of this agreement. They want the Philippines as a whole. They want the Philippines as the entire archipelago in American hands. Because the Spain was Spain was reluctant at this at first, but they were forced by the United States and they seceded. The whole Philippine archipelago was ceded to the United States, even though the the agreement was only Manila. But Spain gave the entire archipelago, Philippine archipelago to the United States. Okay, let's continue. The American forces came and established rule of virtue of the Treaty of Paris. Spain consigned with America on 10 December 1898. As I said before, the treaty seceded Philippines to the United States. The Eruption of the Filipino-American War Erupted on February 4, 1899, San Juan Bridge Incident. American commanders decided to implement their plans. General, Gen General MacArthur attacked Malolos. Due to the spirit of American arms, the Filipinos lost the war. Americans have established government in 1901, but the Philippine revolutionaries continued their struggle for freedom. Um, the San Juan Bridge incident was technically the Filipino revolutionary government with the patrol of the United States Army Regiment patrolled. They have a disagreement at the bridge and they shot each other. The United States retreated, the Filipinos retreated, and after that, the Philipp American declared war and the Philipp revolutionary government of the Philippines. That's why General Carter attacked Malolos. And they want to suppress the Filipinos because of this war. An interesting fact is this. 
if all of you are familiar with the 1911 cult, the pistol 1911 cult, there's a history in that. The Americans invented the 1911 cult because of a Filipino, because of the Filipinos. The Moro tribes were in the Mindanao were fighting the Americans. The Moros were considered that the Americans considered the Moros as vicious berserkers. Keep in mind, the Moros were considered as vicious berserkers. They charged the Americans headlong with just uh, with their swords only under a hail of fire. This, the Americans described the Moro, Mo, the Moro tribes even at the hail of fire. They still charged and they defeated the American troops. Because of this, the Americans defended the 1911 cult because they need a gun that can fire faster than their original um, pistols. That's why the 1911 cult was invented because of the Moro tribes. So, keep in mind. So, we must consider ourselves a little lucky because because of 1911, the cult, the I iconic cult 1911 was invented because of the Filipinos. Okay, let's continue. Between 1901 and 1935, the Revolutionary Army lost many of its cohorts in sporadic engagement, but never lost its cause. Roles of the Philippine Scouts The Philippine Scouts was a military organization in the United States Army from 1901 to World War II. Native Filipinos assigned to the U.S. Army's Philippine Department. A handful of Filipinos received commissions from the United States military. Philippine Scouts units were given the suffix of PS to distinguish from other U.S. Army units. Battle of the Red Pass. Uh, the general was given me the pick of all men that can be spared and ordered me to defend this pass. I realize what terrible task is given me and yet I feel this is the most glorious moment in my life. What I do is for my beloved country. Now sacrifice can be too great. This was quoted by General Gregorio del Pilar. Uh, facts about the Battle of the Earth Pass. The Battle of the Earth Pass was uh, the Philippine version of Thermopylae. Only 60 Filipino rear guards were defending the retreat of Emilio Aguinaldo against over 500 U.S. infantry regiment from U.S. infantry regiment. They hold it out the line from a hill and they dug in and defended until they secured the retreat of General Emilio Aguinaldo. The valiant defense of the rear guard was strong in a sense. But keep in mind, this is called the rear guard. The rear guard was and in short were the reserve or some of them are the old the rear guard are some of people some of the rear guard are old men because the they reserve the fresh and strong men as the main force in the regiment the rear guard are the reserve they are the desperate people they are against 500 infantry regiments from the united states these are fresh with texas sharpshooters the texas sharpshooters were known for their their uh, they shoot. Uh, the Texas sharpshooters were known for their good shooters. They're marksmen of the United States Army. They're the ones who suppress. They they pot shot against the rear guard. Even though the rear guard has the high ground, they one one by one they take them down, and the other rear and the other regiment forces made the flanking maneuver. They flanked the entire battalion. The entire they flanked the entire rear guard and they surrounded and they killed them all. They killed them. Fifty-two out of the sixty rear guards of the Filipinos, fifty-two were killed from from the U.S. Only two were killed and nine were wounded. General Gregorio del Pilar was killed in that action. He was some say he was shot in the neck. Some say he was shot in the eye. Some say he he just ki got killed. It's different sources from different uh, opinions, but some. But all we know is he's dead from that battle. Let's continue. The Sakai Revolution. Macario Sakai de Leon joined KKK in 1894, jailed for his sedition acts, released in 1902 to amnesty, established Republica ng Katagalugan, issued a manifestation in 1904, U.S. anti-brigand law, 
is he a hero or a bandit? In the face of the Americans, he is a bandit. But in the face of the Filipinos, he is a hero. It's different opinions, actually. So, it's your job. It's for you to judge. The Balangiga Massacre. General Luke Ban raided an American detachment station in Balangiga. 30 outright killed, out, killed outright, 8 severely wounded, and died later. 22 wounded and recovered, a 4 missing, and 4 escaped unhurt. General Spit ordered all persons 10 years and older to be killed. The Bagalangiga massacre was a retaliation because General Lukban raided a uh, uh, detachment from a, a base detachment actually. They massacred the entire village and as I said before they killed all persons 10 years and older. And there's a story that they also stole the Balangiga Bell and they brought that into US. But in recent 2019 or 2018 actually, the Balangiga Bell was brought back to the Philippines and it was given back to the Balangiga. Okay, National Defense Act. The establishment of the Philippine Commonwealth on 15 November 1935. President Manuel L. Manuel Luis Quezon sought the service of General Douglas MacArthur to evolve a national defense plan. Commonwealth Act No. 1 was enacted into law, paved the way to the birth of a new Philippine army under the coat of the U.S. Army. It trained the new Filipino members in defending the national the nation. Oh. Philippine in World War II. Two regulars and ten reserve divisions of the Philippine Army undertook the defense of the Philippines, incorporated into the USAFE, or United States Army Forces in the Far East, under the command of General MacArthur, defense of Bataan, initially Filipino-American lines held, problems on food supply, sickness, and malnutrition caused the collapse of the defense. The, the Japanese invasion of the Philippines was considered a uh, shock from... The Filipinos as a whole. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the next day, the Japan bombed all air bases from Manila all the way to Cavite to secure the beachhead for the Japanese. The invasion landing started from Vigan and they pushed through San Fernando. And the divisionary force were landed in Legaspi and they pushed through all to Manila. Keep in mind, these two regulars and ten reserve divisions of the Philippine Army were ill-equipped, undertrained, and overall lack lack in everything. Ammunition, food, supplies, everything. They lack on everything. Hell, the Japanese were advanced, and the, the uh, Japanese equipment were more advanced from these regulars and the ten reserves and division of the Philippines. So, even though they lack in def uh, equipment, they first push on through sheer ferocity from the battle they do a uh, collapsing retreat they defend them from San, Fran San Fernando and they collapse retreat all the way through Manila and through Manila they retreated to Bataan okay let's continue and I'll continue from that from that point on the defense of Corregidor Japanese heavy bombing, artillery shelling, defenders fought gallantly, although food supply and water was low. Defenders endured sickness, surrendered on May 6, 1942. Remaining forces, the Philippines resorted to guerrilla methods and fighting under liberation. Gallant stand stalled in the otherwise unhampered Japanese invasions of other countries. After the invasion, after the beach landing on Legaspi, and the beach landing in San Fernando, the Japanese pushed all the way through Manila. The Filipinos and Americans defended as much as possible to give time in Bataan to gather all the resources, all the equipment, and all they needed to Bataan. General MacArthur ordered all forces to Bataan to defend the last, to make a last stand in Bataan. And all the forces were also making a last stand also on Corregidor. They try to, as much as possible, prolong the invasion plan of the Japanese. The invasion plans of the Japanese were just only one week. They try to conquer the Philippines only in just one week, but they prolong it for two months. In the book of uh, Filipino strategic history, this is a win. This is a prior victory for the Americans and Filipinos who try to defend. 
to the Japanese, this is a costly victory. They took almost two months from their invasion plans to conquer the entire Philippine archipelago. From the Taan, from all the way they pushed San Fernando to Manila, when the f retreating forces went to Manila, they declared Manila as an open city. In order so in order for Manila to not be destroyed from the Japanese artillery and airstrikes. After the because after bombing, after capturing all the airfields in Manila, all the airfields in Luzon actually, all the airfields in Luzon, the Japanese the Japanese rebuilt captured it and rebuilt it and used it as a staging ground for all Japanese air forces in the South Pacific. The strategy of the Japanese before were air superiority. Even from the start of World War II, even before America joined joined uh, World War II against the Japanese, the Japanese were has air superiority over has every superiority. Their planes were advanced than any planes in the U.S. The Japanese has ten battleships and ten aircraft carriers. They all eclipse the they eclipse the strength of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. After and even though they bomb Pearl Harbor, this even though they bomb Pearl Harbor, the Japanese were superior in the Pacific Fleet. The reason the Japanese were defeated in the Pacific Pacific Fleet, even uh, the reason the Japanese was defeated in sea superiority, because of the strategic strategic uh, plans of the United States and the code breaking of the Japanese encoded messages. The linchpin, the why the Japanese were defeated because of the code breaking of the United States. After they held back in Bataan, after they retreated back in Bataan, the Japanese were still defending and retreating, uh, retreating defense all the way to Bataan until the, until the general uh, acting general, actually, because General MacArthur retreated back in Australia, acting general Bataan they declared surrender because they're low on food, low on munition, low on supplies, and more of them are sick. They asked for surrender. And uh, keep in mind, even though the general surrendered in Bataan, the people on Corregidor are still fighting. They're still fighting. Even though the Bataan soldiers are already surrendered, the Corregidor are still standing. But it won't be long until Corregidor also fall from the Japanese might. Uh, another interesting fact. We must commend the Filipino bravery against, uh, from the, ja against the Japanese in World War II. Because there's a story here. Uh, from the invasion of Borneo, from the Japanese, the Japanese invasion of Borneo, the British tried to suppress the Japanese invasion all the way to Singapore. The last bastion of British control is Singapore. The British are well equipped, well supplied, and they outnumbered the Japanese three to one. But they surrendered. The British surrendered to the Japanese. Unlike the Americans and Filipinos, they fought on to the last stand until they cannot fight. But the British on their other end in, in Singapore, they surrendered instantly without a fight. Even because even the Japanese, even the Filipinos American tore down countless bombardments, countless airstrikes from Bataan and Corregidor. They still held on. But the British, on the other hand, surrendered. They surrendered almost 100,000 British troops and British Indian contingents. All of 100,000, they surrendered. The, the, US, the Filipino and US, on the other hand, they held on until they can hold on. Be proud. This is the a show of ferocity and the dedication to all Filipino soldiers and American soldiers in World War II. We should all be proud of them. Okay, let's continue. The liberation. The Hook Balahop was to be part of the broad, broad unit front resistance to the Japanese occupation. Hukbong bayan laban sa mga hapon. That's the motto of the Hukbalahuk. 
Ukbalahap movement was deep rooted in the Spanish encomienda, encomienda. Only after the coming of Americans were reformed initially to lessen tension between tenants and landlords, reforms did not solve the problem. Liberation. I shall return the igni the quote of General MacArthur from before he retreated to Australia to the Filipinos. American landings were initially set in November in 1594 at Sarangani Bay, but due to the rapid success of the American Halsey, Halsey the date was advanced to October 20, 1944. The place of battle was of landing was located in Leyte, a battle of Manila Bay. Here's another interesting fact. The Battle of Manila was considered the Stalingrad, uh, Leningrad of Philippines. If you know your history, Leningrad was sieged by the Germans for two and a half years. It never fell to the Germans. They hold their ground through starvation, execution, through wanton destruction. They hold their ground. The Battle of Manila, the capture of Manila was considered the South, uh, the Southeast Asia Battle of Leningrad. It's comparable to the Battle of Leningrad because the Japanese fiercely hold Manila and they, they fiercely hold Manila and they let the Americans pay in blood inch by inch. They will not surrender. Because they will not surrender. They would rather die than rather surrender to the Americans. That's why it almost took months to capture Manila. Let's continue. Third Republic. 1946-1972. President Ross issued e EO num number 92 October 4 in 1947. The Army was renamed the Armed Forces of the Philippines. May 6, 1948. Four-mile four areas were activated replacing the four-mile district on the same date, the military, training, the military training command were elevated to major commands as Philippine Ground Forces, Philippine Naval Patrol, and the Philippine Air Forces. In 1950, the 7th Army Commands and the 26th BCT were organized. Were organized. Five of these BCTs took turns in the service of PEFTOC from 1950 to 1953. On December 30, President Corino issued EO number. 359 creating the four major services Philippine Army, Philippine Constabulary, Philippine Air Force, and Philippine Navy. Now, keep in mind, today there's only four major services Philippine Army, Philippine Constabulary, Philippine Army, actually, Philippine Army, Philippine Air Force, Philippine Navy. There is no more Philippine Constabulary. We'll get to that later. Scout Rangers, as organized by Captain Rafael Ilito, used its neutralization of hooks when the need for the Scout Rangers no longer exists, brought about by the lack of action. The first Scout Ranger Regiment was deactivated in 1959. A history about the Scout Rangers. The Scout Rangers were trained by the United States Alamo Scouts with the United States Scout Rangers. They were trained by these two units and be what becomes of the Philippine Scout Rangers. On July 1, 1957, HPA was organized with Brigadier General uh, Leoncio Tan as commanding general. In the late 1960s, the ar army was utilized as a national defense force as a nation builder. The army corps of, of engineers of the 51st Brigade as nucleus. By 1970, first division, first tabak, and th the three brigades, second, fourth, and the fifth, as well as the supporting anti-tank artillery and dependent armor company size units were activated. Move on. Post World War II era, major commands were created. July the first, 1947, a small contingent of aircraft was flown was flown by Filipino pilots. HQ National Defense Forces were renamed GHQ AFP, Executive Order Number 389, led by the creation of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, Philippine Army, Philippine Constabulary, Philippine Air Force, and the Philippine Navy were subsequently created, created four military areas. Philippine Army Expansion The onset of the 60s ushered an expansion of the Army's role. 
1969, the NPA was organized, or New People's Army. Military operations supported by the civic actions blocked the escalation of this insurgency. The onset of the 80s saw the birth of the SOT strategy, or Special Operations Teams. Aims to isolate and neutralize insurgencies from the civilian population, dismantle communist political organizations, and deny them control of barangays. Roots of insurgency must be addressed properly. Insurgency is, insurgency is the extension of the politics by means of armed conflicts, inadequacies of political or military training on the part of on the part of the government, IPSP or Bayanihan. Emphasis on human rights, whole of nation approach, people centered approach, peace and development team or PD, PDT. The Army in Humanitarian Missions, PEFTOC. Philippine Expeditionary Force in Korea, part of its unit's commitment as member of the United Nations PEFTOC, took part in decisive battles such as the Battle of Yulton Bridge and the Battle of Hill Erie. Another interesting path is in the Battle of Korea, there is another history here that shows that Filipino ferocity in its, milita in its army. The Battle of uh, Hill Erie is where the Filipinos defended the hill against the insurgents of North Koreans and the Chinese forces. They defended the hill from the retreating forces of, uh, uh, I think, British, I don't know, British, Indian, uh, other foreign armies. They secured their retreat while the Filipinos holded the hill until all the retreating forces have secured and they were relieved by the U.S. forces. And also, they were retreated. But the inspiration is they hold the line against in, against uh, unnumberable odds against the Chinese and the North Koreans. Okay. And the PhilCAV, Philippine Civic Actions Group to the Vietnam, helps build communities and provides medical services. Okay. Uh, on this one is more on the role of the Philippines in Vietnam is more on humanitarian. I think they have combat. I think I think they have combat in Vietnam as well. But they think it's, it's more on humanitarian in this one. The army in the nation building. Philippine army helps provide assistance in areas that lack the need in vital facilities and services like roads, bridges, schools, health, and sanitation. Most of this, like roads, bridges, schools, health, it's most of the their work is more on the. Army, uh, Army Engineer Battalion. This is their role, actually. And in case of uh, a natural disasters like earthquakes, earthquakes, uh, flood, flood, uh, hurricanes, the Philippine Air Force is the one who bring relief to all those isolated areas. So yeah, Philippine uh, Philippine Army is more in without war. The Philippine Army is more on humanitarian aids. Bayanihan. The Philippine Army continues to be a service of the country to the people. It has evolved from its traditional role of war fighting to, to agents of peace and catalysts for the development. The Army in Military Missions, Persian Gulf War. The Philippines sent 200 medical personnel to assist coalition forces in the liberation of Kuwait from the stronghold of Iraq. Iraq War. The Philippines sent 60 medics, engineers, and other troops to assist in the invasion of Iraq. Withdrawn on the fourth of July, nineteen fourth uh, of July, two thousand four. Interesting story here in the Iraq War. Uh, other than the sixty medics, the engineers of the Philippine uh, Philippine engineers they sent to Iraq were <laughs> the other the foreign countries considered the Philippine engineers rather to be reckless. They considered the Philippine engineers reckless because when they sweep mines, the Philippine engineers doesn't have equipment. They doesn't have. They don't have protection gears. They don't have. They don't have uh, uh, armored ve uh, bullet bombproof vest to protect them from mines. No, though they go gung ho. They try to take the bombs without uh, without any equipment because they say we have we have the experience, we have the knowledge, but they do not have the equipment. But we still go on. That's his uh, that's his uh, the mindset of the Philippine engineers, uh, Philippine uh, military engineers in the Iraqi War. Fourth Republic, September 21, 1972. President Marcos declared martial law all over the country. 
Faced with serious insurgents, Marcos expanded the army from 29,000 in 1972 to 65,000 in 1986, strengthened the, strengthened the three independent bri brigades to full divisions. The, Fili the Philippine Light Armor Regiment, later renamed as Palab, was organized. First Scout Ranger Regiment was reactivated. Martial Law I assume that I am utilizing this power vested on me by the Constitution for one purpose alone, and that is to save the Republic and reform our society. I wish to emphasize these two objectives. We will eliminate the threat of violent overthrow of our Republic. But at the same time, we must now reform the social, economic, and political institution in our country. That's what President Marcos said. Martial law to that era. The birth of the New People's Army in 1969 caused the chaotic environment. Declaration of martial law on 21st September 1972. Military operations supported by the civic actions blocked the escalation of insurgency. Martial law year Fourth Republic. Martial law year Fourth Republic 1972-1989. August 21, 1983, Senator Benigno Aquino was assassinated. The infantry regained strength from only 3,000 to 1979 to 25,000 guerrillas in 1986. Resentment within the military grew, thus the birth of reform, the AFP movement, headed by Senator Honasan and Minister Juan Ponce Enrile. February 7, 1986, President Marcos called for snap election. The opposition rallied behind Sen Senator Aquino's widow, Mrs. Cora Mrs. Corazon C. Aquino. Uh, in this time, the NPA was not considered to be a, a hostile radical movement unlike today. There are reports from this time the NPA was actually kind of supportive to the to the different barangays they helped them protect from uh, from the from the abusive militaries and the constabularies from this time the npa was considered good people unlike today the npa was considered to be uh, more active and radical like now but keep in mind the npa was a shadow of its former glory from today now, I mentioned before about the Philippine Constabulary. Why it's not mentioned right now? Only three, only three are now mentioned. But the Philippine Constabulary is no, is gone. The reason the Philippine Constabulary was reason because the Philippine Constabulary has so many issues when it's martial law. The military were yes were the strong were the ruling factors in the martial law but the philippine constabulary were the judge jury and executioner of the martial law they have so many they have so many wrong they have wronged so many citizens before when you ask try asking i, I dare you try asking any of your parents or any of your grandfathers and talk to them what is what the role of the philippine constabulary some of them some of them have history and some of them have groups stories how the Philippine constabulary try to scare scare the people the masses and how their dealings and how they force some of the Filipinos to their ways if you ask them from their time and perspective the mention of the philippine constabulary the mention of the cp cp just the, that revision alone cp the all all of them some of them come running home because see the term cp was notorious from the the time of the martial law okay continue Martial Law Year 4th Republic 1972 and 1986. Minister Enrile tried to mount a coup but failed when the plan was discovered and arrested some per perpetrators on 25th, 22nd February 18, 1986. Lieutenant General Fidel V. Ramos joined Enrile in the barricade 
Mr. Riley tried to mount a coup but failed when the plan was discovered and arrested and arrested some perpetrators on the 22nd February 1986. Lieutenant General Fidel V. Ramos joined in Riley in the barricade in Camp Crame announcing their support to Ms. Aquino as the rightful president. Agat Agapito in Aquino, brother of the slain senator and Archbishop Hamin Amin Sin urged people to surround the camp to order to pre in order to protect Enrile and Ramos, thus what came to know as the EDSA People Power Revolution. February 24, 1986, when a flight of several Skorsky who were ordered to straf, stra, straf camp Kami landed on said camp and defected instead. Military supports for Marcos eroded swiftly and accepted U.S. offers to fly him out of the Malacanang Palace. He was eventually forced into exile in Hawaii where he died in 1989. It was the most bloodless revolution in history. Fact. The title of the Philippines' most bloodless revolution is being contested right now. Myanmar's coup d'etat by... State Councilor uh, Ang, Ang San Suu Kyi, yes, Ang San Suu Kyi, the State Councilor of Myanmar, Ang San Suu Kyi, uh, coup against the military government of Myanmar is being contested as the, is also being considered a bloodless revolution. In fact, they also considered Ang San Suu Kyi is to be at the same level as uh, Corazon Aquino. It's an ongoing internet debate. It's not a very large debate. It's just an ongoing internet debate. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar it's in Reddit. If you're familiar in Reddit, then go check it out. Uh, ongoing debate is who is the most bloodless revolution? Is it in Myanmar or in the Philippines? But I'm still considering the Philippines, of course, because we're the first. Okay, let's continue. Uh, campaign plan 70s martial law so 21st september 1972 to 17 january 1981 plaza miranda bombing 1971 to front war ccp npa and mlnf bma pda 77 765 in august 1975 established on cp inp early 80s loi katatagan Focus on strong straight end of martial law in 1981, continuing resistance, growing political movements, Nino Ekison assassination 1983, establishment of regional uni unified commands, RUCs. Post EDSA, 1986, LOI, Mamayan. Mamamayan. In inspired by People Power Revolution, revolutionary government under a freedom constitution, AFP human rights. Uh, reorientation, reorientation, beginning of peace negotiations with insurgents, uh, year 1988, Lambat Bitag series, first, second, and third, up to 19, 19, 1994. 1987, Philippines Constitution Peace Negotiation Series of Coup attempts, special operations teams, clear holds, cons consolidate developments, and CHD, CHCD, operational mythology, Methodology, Village Defense Systems, Kafgu AA, Venus Flytrap, and Silent War. Other factors, collapse of communism worldwide, split within CCP, removal of the U.S. base. Campaign plans, 1994, Unlad Bayan. Centered on national buildings, Philippines 200, NIC, Hood Peace Building, programs of Ramon, Ramos administration, amnesty for right-sided rebel, rightists, rebels, peace agreements with MNLF, re repel of RA-1700, anti-subversion law. 1996, Pagkalinga, Pagkagalinga, offshots of RA-6975, facilitation of further coordinations of the AFP, PNP, efforts against insurgents, Transfer of ISO responsibility of some areas to the PNP. Suppose AFP transition to extend defense AFP modernization law. 1997, Kasaganan. One, one for progress. AFP guide towards the attempts of the Philippines 2000s. RA 8551. Return of the ISO responsibility to the AFP. 2000s. 
Balangay, Total Approach Strategy of the National Peace with Development Plan, NDPD, All Out War Against the MILF. I mentioned before about the Philippine Constabulary. The successor of the Philippine Constabulary because of its different, uh, because of its numerous uh, faults, it was succeeded by, as now, the, is the National uh, PNP. Actually, Philippine National Police. That is the, success for, the successor of the Philippine Constabulary. Uh, 2002 Bantay Laya 1 under the framework of the National In Internal Security Plan NISP combination of the two successful approaches Magsaysay right hand left hand approach Lambat Bitag SOT approach objectives defeat the CCP NP, NDA, NPA NDF contain the MILF destroy the ASG Bantay Laya 2 under the framework of the Hans National Internal Security Plan, NISP. Objectives. Defeat the CCP, NPA, NDF. Contain the MILF. Destroy the ASG. Era clearing. Red and white areas. CNC direct, di directive to cross the insurgents by June, by June 2010. Fifth Republic, 1986-1992. Coup attempts. Manila Hotel Incident, July 7, 1986. God Save the Queen Incident, 1986. Channel 4 Incident, January 1987. August 28, 1987. Coup, December 1 to 9, 1989. Coup, Oakwood Mutiny, 2003. And Vanilla Peninsula Mutiny. Uh, the Vanilla Peninsula Mutiny was led by Senator Trillanes. If Senator Trillanes, if you see from the picture right there, if you see the picture right there, it's a picture of Senator Trillanes before he was in the army. All of these uh, facts you can search it in the internet at your leisure, if you want to know the facts and the stories of different of the different coups. Uh, the Pocket Rebellions, the Black Forest Incident in April 1987. The Ginaldo Keepers in March 4, 1990s, the Noble Uprising of October 1990s, and the establishment of the PNP. That's the start of the birth of the PNP from the before successor of the Philippine Constabulary. Now, conclusion. The AFP of the past is a record of bravery, sacrifice, and undaunted persistence to struggle to, struggle to make the country free. The AFP today is the mirror and the fruit of the past. Thus, the soldiers are peace-loving, partner in nation-building, competent, and more self-reliant corps of men and women. The AFP of tomorrow is not only protectors of the state, but an agent of peace and partner in nation-building for better Philippines. Now, I'll end this. Now, to end my discussion, I'll quote of, uh, I'll quote J.K. Chesterton's story. The true soldier fights not because he hates what is in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. That is the true motivation of a soldier. Thank you for listening, everyone. Have a good day.